Welcome everybody back to my watercolor Tuesday and we're continuing with the fairy theme <laughs> and today I'm going to be doing a fall fairy but I thought I'd show you the little fairy we did last week and this one is um, the honey tester <laughs> and what I did was I just took a, a label off of one of my honey jars and used it for this painting. So you can just either photocopy one or you can use the existing um, label. And the drawing is my own, so if you want to try this for yourself. And it's uh, in the members uh, group and it has many, many more downloadables for digi art and also drawings and traceables for all of my um, paint alongs. Uh, the beginning level and up, there's three levels and you can uh, use them for whatever you want. Hey Sandra! Hi Lulu! Good to see you. So this was the honey test tester. And then uh, Thursday is our acrylic mixed media um, day, and I did this little bear with some honeybees and some uh, sunflowers. And this is just on scrapbook paper, and this will go into my file folder. That's why it's shaped like a file folder. I cut the shape out. So any... Um, Scrapbook paper will do. Just find something that will look good for the background. That's what I used here. And I have the video for that also. And there's actually a free to the public uh, traceable with this one if you want to give this a try. Hi Janet, Dorothy, Michelle. Good to see you all. Hope you're having a fantastic fall day. I am here. It's gorgeous. About 18 Celsius here. Sunny gorgeous day. So this is our little guy and he's the leaf painter. <laughs> so um, the, there's also a downloadable for traceable for this one also. Um, I have printed this on some Fabriano uh, cold press paper, 140 pound. And I uh, put it through my laser printer so it won't smear. Oh, it's summer there. Are you in um, Australia? Or does it just feel like summer? <laughs> so it's crazy weather. Anything's possible. So the downloadable is also available for all members on my um, membership here on YouTube. And you can find out about that in the link in the description below. Now, uh, I haven't thought too much about color and I'm going to be using a mix of different types of um, professional grade watercolor here. And I, th I think I want to do a bit of a background. And I'll show you there's different ways of doing the background. Uh, 45 Celsius. Bos uh, Bosnia. Ah, oh, yes, that would be ooh, 45 Celsius. Wow. That's over 100. Hope you have air. <laughs> wow, I don't think we've ever gotten that high here. Got to 40, 41, but that's as far as we've ever get here in Ontario, Canada. Um, so now I think I'll, I'm going to do the background first. And I don't, it's not going to be a detailed background, it's more or less going to be. Uh, a wet and wet so we're just going to play with uh, some colors and see what we can 
blooms. I forget blooms, that's fine. Um, wherever you put the water is where the paint will go to. It won't go past the areas that you wet. So just take that in mind. And you want a fair amount of water because you want that um, paper to soak it up and stay wet for a little bit. And you can usually see a sheen on the paper. So just give it a nice coat. And don't do too big area all at once. Uh, it will dry up. And if you forget um, where you put the water, you could end up with a hard mark where it has already dried. So I'm just going to put a little bit there. And then I think I'm probably going to do some yellows, golds, and a touch of green. So I have, uh, let's see, this is Yellow Ochre by Windsor & Newton. So I'll put a little bit there. And I'm going to put some of this um, Hensa Yellow by Core. It's a fairly, anything with, that Core makes I find very strong. And leaf green. It's a very bright green. And we'll see what we can get. So I want a fairly soupy mix. I don't want it too thick. And then you just dab in sections and let it do its thing. You can mix colors together if you want. Just representing um, trees, leaves, that type of thing that might be in the background since he's on a branch. So there's probably in the middle of a tree here. That's what I'm going with. You could add berries to this too if you wanted to, so little polka dots would kind of look like a berry. And then you can just uh, wet the area around it and just kind of uh, fade it out. Maybe add a little bit of green here and there. Some here. And this is watercolor paper that I'm using. You can always strengthen it more if you want. It's up to you how strong you want the uh, colors to be. But these will dry lighter, so keep that in mind. So if you think it's too dark, wait till it dries, because it will dry quite light. It's usually about 35% mm, roughly, a little lighter. Now core, um, is different. I don't know what they put in their mix, but they tend to keep their colors much stronger than most other paints. That's probably why I like Core so much. More in there. More 
green. Those are yellow. Just let it mix, play with each other. What paper are you using? Um, I'm using Fabriano. Uh, that's the. I like Fabriano, um, and I also like. What's the other one? Um, B paper, if you can get it, but it's so darn hard to get anymore, and it's gone up in price tremendously. Uh, the other one I like is Fluid. I think you can get it in the States and in Canada. I don't know about um, anywhere else, but it's a nice paper to work with. It's very similar to Fabriano. Now, nothing beats arches, but I, I myself, just I can't see spending that kind of money when you're just playing experimenting, learning. It's very expensive paper. And I think if you learn on the other paper, it's it's a better learning experience because you get to understand the paint more. So when you work on a really nice type of paper, you don't have any of those difficulties. But if you were to work on a, a nice... Um, paper that does all the things they say, then you get kind of spoiled. And then when you run into paper that you haven't used and it does different things because you're not used to it, you don't know, you get frustrated more. And so I find let's tackle the um, the other paper first and see what we can do with it. That way, when it's time to use the good stuff, you can and you won't have any problems and it'll be a whole lot easier. I don't know if that makes sense to you. He's holding a feather and the feather is what it's his paintbrush for painting the fall leaves. Now, have you thought of any other fairy drawings that you would like me to do? I've only got a couple, maybe one or two to do for the end of the month. Let me know. Are they mischievous? Do you want me to do fairy houses or just fairies? I could do fairy houses too. Makes sense. Plus, so scared to experiment with self experiment. Yeah, exactly, Michelle. And then it doesn't limit, you know, you get used to uh, how paint moves on the cheaper paper, and then it doesn't limit you to working on papers. Whereas if you get spoiled by the good stuff. You don't want to use the other stuff. And I think that it does. It stops you from working on things when it's very expensive. At least it does for me. I don't know about anyone else, but I don't like playing or experimenting with oh, there. real expensive paper. I do have some here, but 
you know, I only use it when I do commissions or um, something for myself, gifts, that type of thing. Break it out a little more up here. So I just want it fairly light. I don't want too much color. I'm kind of blotchy as it goes up there. Might even put some blue in here maybe. I don't know. We'll see. here and there to kind of make it look like you know blurred out leaves at the back here you can always go back in and add a few more if you want you may want darker Okay, so there's the background. So I'm going to just dry that with the heat gun. So is anybody else uh, working on some fall projects? Now, you, another thing you can do for the backgrounds, uh, when you lo just lose the glisten, you can add some salt to it and it'll give it this um, <clears throat> kind of blooms in it. It looks really cool for backgrounds. But with that you have to let it dry on its own. So I can't do that while I stream because then it takes forever. <laughs> Before you do anything around the fairy, you want to make sure your paper is good and dry or it will bleed into your background. Now, is there anyone that would be interested in learning how to draw fairies? That type of thing. Any, or do you just want to see the painting part of it? Give me some ideas for future streams. in some areas. It's a little damp there, but if I work on his body, it should be good. All right. Uh, yes, please. All right. I'll write that down. <clears throat> Anything in particular you want to learn to draw?
Kathleen. Good to see you all here. You'd like drawing too? Great. So this little guy, he's actually got a little vest type of thing on, and the vest is actually a leaf. <laughs> and he's got a belt and an acorn for holding his paint, <laughs> his magic paint. That goes down a straw or a feather, and this is part of the feather, um, the quill of the feather. Instead of having the, the ink on the end of the larger end, he's actually put a hole into the quill near the tip of the feather, so it goes out. Fairies would be nice. I love the way. Oh, thanks. Okay. So more fairies. I like drawing them. They're fun. <laughs> there's different types of fairies, too. There's more animal. There's pretty fairies. There's funny fairies. <laughs> Uh, fairy mushrooms, lighthouse dragon, cute critters, botanicals. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah, I was actually thinking of doing a gnarly old tree with a face on it. <laughs> botanicals, lighthouse dragon, and cute critters. All right. I'll write these down so I don't forget. And old trees. Um, all right. That helps. Sometimes I, it's hard to know what everyone likes. I know what I like, but it doesn't necessarily mean you'd like it. Okay, so I think I'm going to make his little vest. Uh, leaf thing. Um, probably, well, he's a painter, so he's the artist. So let's um, put some clean water on his little leaf vest and we'll give him a colorful vest. And I think what I'm going to do, let's see, can be part of it there. I'm going to take a, one of these things, I don't know what they're called, and I'm going to bruise the paper by pressing down on the veins. And what will happen is that you'll find that the paint will go down in those grooves that you've made um, and that will be darker. Um, do it before you wet it though. I should have done that before I wet it but you just have to be careful you don't um, damage it. So first I'm going to do it I think in the green, this bright green. Um, we'll go down the center. And I'm just going to go down those veins a little bit just to make those nice and green. Maybe along the bottom of the belt. Then I'm going 
I'm just going to take a bit of water on my brush and even though I, I put more water on there, see how it's gone into the veining? And then I can take, let's see, oranges, maybe a nice dark mm, coral red maybe. We can just dab and let it bleed. And it'll also go up some of those veins depending where you put it. I like watching the, how it uh, travels. So cool. Never get tired of that. I like it how it spiders out. And you can use your finer watercolors if you want for this part. If you want to get really detailed. Let's get a paper towel. And I think he'll have some dark green pants on. Mix a little bit of this bright green with it. Kind of a Now I don't want to go too close to that red that I put on because it will bleed into my pants. So I'm just going to put a fairly thick coat. He's got holes in his knees, pants. He's got a little patch on his knee too, or on his leg. Tricky business doing his painting. Just put something else on there. And then I think I'll just add a little bit of a darker color, maybe a nice Hmm. More of this. This is um, brought sienna. Let's just take a little bit of that and just. This is still wet. So just along the base underneath of his pants to be shading. There's a little crease there, maybe on his knee, and just just underneath those leaf parts there, be a little bit darker shaded. And then I'm just going to soften it a little bit. Bring it out. And let's see what color socks. Now you can always go back and change the colors. Because remember, they will dry lighter. And you can add colored pencil. So it's basically just I'm doing a coat, base coat. 
and then I can go in with um, sh shadows. a little bit more on the folds in his socks so it's a little darker and he's gonna have hmm let's see I think I'm gonna make the belt holding up his acorn spray gun <laughs> um Probably darker. So I'm going to use this, the burnt umber. And the buckle can be a different color. Maybe we'll give it a shiny buckle. Could use some. Um, shiny paint. Silver maybe? Or bronze? Oh, I know what I got. I have um, Xandra's rose gold. That would be cool. And it'll dry a little bit lighter so I can add some shadows in the in the wrinkles folds of the fabric um, I can go in with pen too I'm gonna make, I think I'm gonna make the center a little darker. That uh, vein. Might have to do it when it's drier. All right. So we can do his hat because this is fairly wet. So the hat's going to be kind of in the same, so this light green. And then I can go back in with a different color. Use my uh, other paint brushes. I'll make a little bit more for his goggles. Let's put those in.
breathe. <laughs> Let's dry that up a little bit. So the acorn's kind of a um, sienna color, I would say a raw sienna color on the bottom part. So I'm just going to put that in and just for the initial uh, coverage, the base color. Be a little bit darker along the bottom. So you can just add just a bit of more condensed color down there and I'm gonna just put it on the top here but I know the top is darker out there a little bit. I'll let that dry. Let's play with the leaves for a bit. So okay, so let's put some veining in again with that thing. Where did I put it? There it is. So I'm just going to go down and make some marks. You can make as many as you want. It's up to you. And we're just put, uh, let's see, some yellow, I think, and some green, that leaf green again. Maybe some of this color too, dirty it up a bit. Sienna. Okay, so again, I'm just going to put the water in, wet it, and then drop in the colors I want. You don't want puddles then you'll get pooling but you want it um, to be have a sheen to it at, at least okay so we'll drop some let's see orange in it and 
and some of this yellow green. It's fun watching the colors move against each other. Some red maybe, a little bit of red. While that's drying, we can do another one. You can make them as bright as you want. Let's make this one a little more on the yellow side. Then add some just a smidge of green, maybe down the center. Let's see what it does. You can make them go out and get some leaves if you're not sure about. There's no wrong way of doing these. And then just a little bit of red in here, maybe at the very tip. Put some red in. Sometimes you'll see half of the leaf is colored and the other part isn't. It's strange. A little bit of yellow on. That's cool. I like doing that.
All right, so let's put some veining in there. Okay, let's let that dry a little bit because it's pretty wet looking right now. We'll decide what color paint he's putting on. I think the branch is going to be kind of um, purpley brown, I guess you could say. So let's get that. I think it was umber color. And I'm going to add a little bit of dioxazine purple to it. Not much because that stuff's like crazy um, concentrated, but it darkens the mix. But I do want it a little bit on the purpley side. Let's see, that's good. Kind of a dusty plum, I guess you could call it. And I'm gonna start over here. This is wet into dry because I don't want it to be moving all over the place. Let's, let's try some of those new brushes of mine. You're able to um, control it a lot easier with these brushes. Face coat. I'm gonna let that dry and we'll work on his skin here. What color should I do his skin? Hmm. regular skin color or let's see raw sienna have to change his skin color is kind of same as the background and his socks but I can always change that
So the printable will be um, this size, but you can enlarge it or shrink it. And the lines are fairly small, so you probably won't need to do a whole lot of inking. To yours. I guess I could give them a green hue <laughs> to his uh, shadowed areas. That would work. Just the right amount. So we'll let that dry and now I'm going to do the feather. So the feather is kind of a whitish, almost on the gray side. Um, let's get some ultramarine blue here. We don't need a lot, so I won't make it too much. And some umber. Kind of a gray, blue gray. And for the, let's see, fan brush, I'm going to use a fan brush to do the feather. So the feathers, mm, I think I'll do it in the same, I'm just going to Brush it down. Gives you nice lines. darker in the right here darken some areas actually I can use my bigger brush for that 
this one. Because the lines will still show through. What color should we do that? Maybe yellow? With a bit of red in it maybe? Red. making it a little more concentrated. And his wings, I think they're going to be a little bit dark too. Mm. Just this part is going to be more on the uh, skin tone. Here. I'm going to put a little bit of shadowing in, like under his arm and his hand. his neck and his chin and his ear Let's see under his nose
I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna use the sun gold for his his wings, <laughs> or or should I use the um, rose gold? What do you think? Dorothy. Let's see. Sun gold. This is so sparkly. One thing about this, do rinse your brush after you use this on, in different water because if you don't, you end up with rose gold in everything <laughs> from then on. That's cool. Let's do uh, maybe rose gold buckle. So I haven't used the rose gold yet. Let's do his buckle. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, should be a, uh, still fairly wet. Let's try it. I'm gonna put some watermarks, dabs, and then you can either spray it or use your paintbrush. But if you just put some dabs of water here and there, let it sit for a little bit. And then take a paper towel after it's sat. 
and dry it up. Oh, I think I have, no, it's not going to work. I need to uh, wait for it to dry completely. It usually leaves a watermark. That one worked a little bit. Might have to leave it a little bit longer. So let's dry that up a bit. Yeah, aren't the wings nice? That's the uh, sun gold. You can get it from um, Zandra. She's in chat. And it's the paintandpaperstudio.com. Yeah, nice. I like the wings. All right, I'm going to spray this and see what happens. I'm going to leave that. And then... Let's do some more work on the stem here. So some umber, ooh, ultramarine, darken that area up. Nice dark color. And I'm just going to do a little bit more shading. Well, wherever he's stepping, there'd be a little bit more shadow along the bottom here. hole in the leaf there and well I have this color and these will uh, do some dabbing I made a bunch of little circles so I can just dab around some of these circles it's all right if you don't have a complete circle just want it polka dotted looking it'll give it a little more depth A little more concentrated on the bottom here, more darker. It's kind of rounded, so just to give that effect, you need to darken that area a little bit more. And in 
the center here it kind of dips down. You can darken that. Got a little bit of more concentrated uh, color. Okay. Let's see if we can pull any of this up. No, it's not doing it. Hmm. Darn. I suppose we could have put some salt on there, but I don't want to wait that long. <laughs> I'm going to make his glasses a little bit on the blue side, I think. And I'm gonna make, I think I'm going to put a little bit of a green tinge to his skin, too. Just a smidge. I'm going to darken a little bit in there. There. Well, I could put some sun gold on his glasses, too. Mm, might do that after it dries. So I'm going to fix this up here. Get rid of some of that. have to be a lot but and there he is Or a little bit of white left, so just cover it up with whatever, whatever the background is. Just around him. I wouldn't worry too much about um, the leaves. They can have some blotchy spots. Okay, I'm going to put some green on his face. Hmm, let's see. Use bright green. Water down. Doesn't have to be really bright, but in the shadowed areas. Maybe his ears are a little more on the green side. And his nose. Soften some of those hard edges if you want. This is a stiffer brush, so you're able to do that. So just with some uh, clear water, just scrub it a bit and then press down. It gets rid of the really hard edges.
cheek. Um, oh, should do his hat too. Just got a little bit of a darker green here, and I'm gonna just put it in some of the areas where it would be shadowed a little bit around the leaf. To, to, just to distinguish between how it's folded. Give it some dimension. It's not much of a difference in color, but that's, sometimes that's all you need. It's just a little bit of a difference in value. Little ear. Could use a little darker area there. One more in there. Doesn't take much. bit of difference in the I think they have stripes on the bottom part of the acorn like I haven't seen ever seen one before but I don't know if they grow in this area to tell you the truth I've never seen one What else?
Yeah, I've never seen an acorn. Holy crap, I must clean up 50 million. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen an acorn. I don't know. I couldn't even tell you what the leaf looks like. In the spring, I'll dig up 50. <laughs> oh, yeah. So let's dry that and we'll use some pen ink. Zero three. This is a micron mic microperm pen. And they're water um, waterproof and fate proof. So, like I did before, not all of it will be uh, have pen work on it. I usually just do more or less the shaded areas. This will be the patchwork here along the leaf edge of his vest. And I think I'll just put um, fabric, I don't know what this is, Some kind of, maybe it's a grass felt. I'm shocked that you guys haven't seen acorns recently. Maybe it's a certain type of... Is it oak that it grows off of? Maybe it's a certain type of oak we don't grow here. I don't know. I just don't ever remember seeing any. And you would think I would.
Yes, oaks, most hardwoods grow in the south, so pro probably not that unusual. Yeah, I know there are, we do have some oaks here, but um, not all the different types that you guys have. Definitely. No, <laughs> thanks, Michelle. Give it a try. I hope you'll um, get the printable and then uh, try it out yourself. You don't have to do watercolor if you don't want, but I think they're cute. I haven't uh, thought of my last fairy to do yet. Got any suggestions? What do you want? What you want to see him or her doing? I'll draw them up this weekend. Isn't there a poem about from uh, Tiny Acorns Grow the Mighty Oak? Yeah, that's right, Kathleen. Yeah, there is. Do some circles in here on top, here and there. That's the grass belt going around it. straps <laughs> holding it in place
Okay, a little knee thingy. Down one side of the whatever you want to call it is These are fun. I like doing these. I'm just going to put a little bit in here just to show that it's a leaf folded up on its edge. marks of mm. and the tree limb can have some more shading underneath the pen you can just do scribbles dashes makes it look a little more like bark. I remember doing a whole sketchbook full of <laughs> different tree limbs, cracks, that type of thing for art school. And you had to fill a sketchbook every month. So you basically just drew whatever you could see. dots down it. Make it a little uneven even. Gnarly looking. Uh, 
Uh, Kathy, what is the pen you are using, please? This is a, a microperm by Secura. I don't know if you can see that. It is a point zero three. Just a few in, in the um, leaves. You don't have to do all of the leaf. I like just doing kind of the inside edges. Just um, I don't know. By doing just a bits and pieces of the leaf, kind of gives it more, um, leaves the delicateness of it, I guess you could say. You don't have to put a whole lot in. Same with the veining, you don't have to put all the veining in. Sometimes if you do put all of a whole bunch of straight lines, it kind of uh, makes it look unreal, in my opinion. But, you know, each to their own, whatever you like, you do. There's different styles of everything, so, you know, you got to find what your style is. Do you like? Okay, this is his pen, so there'll be a little bit of a shadow here there. And some highlights too. A lot of time your your mind's eye can fill in stuff you don't put in. So a lot of times you don't need all that stuff. And his feathers, I think I will put a little bit more line work in. But showing this rib. You 
can make it a certain type of feather too, like maybe you want blue in it for a blue jay, or striping on it, or polka dots, whatever. Could be from a fantasy bird. We got fairies, so anything's possible. want to emphasize some of these feathers and it's going to be a kind of a ratty looking feather because it's a work feather. <laughs> so there's going to be splits in it and not the greatest looking feather but it does the job for painting the leaves. is working out as long as I got watercolor. Yeah, watercolor pencils will work too. First thing I did testing my pens set up a bag. Yeah, you have to find your what you want to do. Hey, Lena! <laughs> Thanks! Oh no, you're dizzy? This is downloadable, Lena, so <laughs> give it a try. It's in the member stream. Our members uh, community. Sorry. I'm sure you'll do awesome. You always do. Now I could do a bunch of line work in there too. Depends how much you want to craziness you want to do. Uh, let's do some little bit of, uh, I think I need some highlights. So I'm going to use a white pencil. some really crappy pencils here for some reason. That hurts my It's hmm. a little bit of highlights on his cheek maybe. Top of his ear. Head, maybe in here. This isn't really doing the proper thing. So let's try gel pen. And jelly roll. I'm going to do just a few dots. I wonder if they'll stay on the top here on some of these um, dark sections. Hopefully they'll stay, I don't know. Top of his ear. And his nose. need a whole lot but just want to 
show a little bit of highlight. This one's not working much either. There's maybe this will work. That's better. And some highlight areas around here because it will have. Shininess on it. And on the, I'm just going to do some scribbles on the very top of, of the wood. Just to give it a little bit of highlight just at the very top, just some scribbles. highlight on his knee here. Depends how much you want to play with this. Alright. You could, let's see what time it is. I, I got a little bit of time. The sun's going to work, so I'm going to have to Do the doggy thing. So I can make more leaves in the background here if you wanted to have uh, a little bit more recognizable leaves. You can do some negative painting. So you could You just get a little bit of a darker color than what you have in the background. And you do some negative painting. You paint around the leaf. So you're not actually painting the leaf, you're painting around the leaf. And then you just fade it out. Let's put a couple in here.
So it's just um, another way of doing the background if you want to get a little bit more leafage in there. Just remember to walk it out so it's a little darker and then it goes fading out. All right, so I think he's done. We'll zoom you in a little bit so you can see him. I got him stuck on my board. He's just painting. <laughs> All right. I think he turned out cute. So if you got any ideas for some more fairies for me to draw up, make sure you leave it in the description below so I can see them. Don't ask me what I ate yesterday, I oh, can't. <laughs> Thanks, Lena. Yeah, isn't the sun gold pretty? Sparkly. Very sparkly. Looks cool. So I'll let you guys go and you have a fantastic day. Get out and get some more um, fairies drawn up or leaves. Practice something. Just keep drawing. The more you draw, the better you get. So I'll see you on Thursday. We'll be doing another acrylic painting. And this time I think I'm going to do a fairy house. But they're going to be part pumpkin. <laughs> So it'll be kind of cool. And I'll also have a traceable for that one. Thanks, guys. You have a fantastic day. Bye for now.